next on the ice is the U.S.'s Patrick Dickerson. Okay, I can do this. As long as I land that triple axle, triple loop combination, I should get enough points to qualify for the Grand Prix Finals. Listen here, Pat. You better not look like a sandwich out there. You have to be the tuna melt. What, what do you mean, coach? You know, a sandwich. Like the ones you love so much. You have to transcend the basic sandwich in order to become the most elegant sandwich of all. Become one with your music and ascend to a new plane of delicious existence. Okay, I will try my best. Hey, if you're only trying at this point, you'll never achieve true greatness. I thought you said you were going to win the gold. You know, I've been thinking. I think after the finals, I'm going to retire. I'm too old for figure skating anyway. Too old? What do you mean? I was thinking I would come back next season. Really? You mean it, coach? Well... If you're not going to win me the gold, I'll just have to do it myself. Welcome to Gate Crashers, a podcast dedicated to kicking open the door to your next favorite thing. Our mission, our creed, our code is this, to make all things more approachable and accessible to everyone. We want you to find a universe that you'll fall in love with. My name's Amanda, and my pronouns are she, her. And my name is Patrick, and my pronouns are he, him. So today we are going to be talking about Yuri on Ice, uh, which I'm very excited about. Uh, And Pat is going to give us a quick back of the box blur before we dive right in. Uh, Yes. So uh, the anime Yuri on Ice is about Yuri Katsuki, a 23-year-old Japanese figure skater who feels as if he's washed up. After a a disastrous season, he returns home, convinced it's time to retire. But when a video of him performing a routine by his idol, Russian figure skater Viktor Nikif, Nikiforov Nikiforov. (laughs) goes viral. (laughs) Victor himself arrives in Japan, intending to become Yuri's coach. Shenanigans, bitter rivalries, tons of figure figure skating, and romance ensue. Yes, Victor Victor Nikiforov. I could have said it before I had to read it off of the screen. I realized that, like, when when I was typing it, the way I say it is not the way I would spell it. (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah 100 i could not like i could not figure out how this was spelled for the life of me yeah listen <laughs> look last last episode i did i butchered every japanese name at least this time it'll be russian names i'm butchering and i'll feel slightly less bad about it <laughs> yuri on ice was created by sayo yamamoto and mitsuru kubo and produced by mappa in 2016 uh, the 12-episode anime is probably one of the most well-researched anime, let alone sports anime, that I've probably ever seen. Um, according to an interview with Yamamoto, she had been wanting to make an anime about figure skating for years before anyone bothered to actually take the idea seriously. She said that she was usually, whenever she pitched it, she was always met with like laughter before they were like, oh, you were serious? Oh, well, no, actually. Um Almost serendipitously, she was contacted by a producer while she was at a figure skating competition um, because she like she frequented them and like to watch them. Um, And he was hoping to launch a new series. And um, and when she said she wanted to do one about figure skating, the producer replied, great, we've been wanting a new sports anime. And she was like, yay. Um, And that's how Yuri on Ice came to be with, of course, a bunch of really cool stuff in the middle, but we don't want to spoil that just yet. 
Um, along with the anime, there's also an OVA based on a side story manga centered around a supporting character's skate exhibition called Welcome to the Madness. Uh, there's also a feature film called Ice Adolescence that was planned for release in 2019, but has since been delayed. And we don't have any further information on it. And that makes me sad. Yeah. And so the anime is uh, an original anime and isn't based on a manga uh, but there was that side manga that came out. Uh, so if you're looking for Yuri on Ice manga, you'll find the side one, but not not the original because it is, in fact, an original story when put to screen. And you will also have a fun time looking for the side manga because that that took me a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I have I have it screenshotted. Though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it came out with uh, it was like a special thing released with a DVD, I think. It wasn't released physically with the DVD because I would have it, I feel. Um, Because I do have a special edition of the DVD, but it's entirely plausible that it was like a Japanese exclusive or whatever, because I definitely read it on like a scan site and was like, I will never find this again. So I just had to screenshot all of it (laughs) so I can read it again later. So like, if you want it, hit me up. Yeah. Yes, please contact Amanda for all of your unofficial manga needs. <laughs> um, so, so the themes of this, uh, themes of Yuri on Ice. So one of the themes is uh, homosexuality. This is a, uh, this is pretty queer. It's it's pretty gay. Uh, we'll talk about that because there's some debate about it, but... Uh, Anyway, there's some debate about it, but I need y'all to know that you're wrong. Yeah, and we'll get into <laughs> just right it. off the bat. We'll get into it because I even I was Googling stuff today and really there's no reason. Anyway, um, other themes include passion, romance, self-acceptance, perseverance, the value of support systems, finding your inspiration, achieving your dreams, surpassing your limits and just a sprinkle of the power of friendship. Just a sprinkle, but it's always there. Always. <laughs> Um, And as for people who may like this, of course, the homosexuals, the gays, the queer community, y'all will love this shit out of this. And if you haven't watched it, you should. Um, Fans of sports, because, you know, this was created as a sports anime and sort of just morphed from there. But fans of sports, the Olympics, or like huge mega fans of figure skating. I know there are a lot of y'all out there because my mother's one of them. Um, Fans of, like I said, sports anime. Even if you're into the more masculine types of sports anime, you'll really enjoy this because it gets very technical. Um, And also fans of just romance and slice of life stories. Um, Even though this has an overarching plot, the episodes, they all feel like tiny little micro stories in themselves and it's just it's so wholesome yeah and it's you know it's only 12 episodes but the um even all the different characters that get introduced we get like information about them and kind of their lives and their you know their reasons for skating and all that kind of stuff and they're really it, you, it really does have that and nice like their slice individual of individual skating styles too yeah yeah it's really really cool the kind of how much they're able to go into when in like 12 25 minute episodes uh, into all of all of these different, uh, you know, lives of all these different people from around the world and kind of the differences of all of them. So uh, it's really cool. And and I will say as a um, somebody who watches a lot of sports, uh, including as a figure skating, gay. yeah, as somebody, <laughs> yeah, a sports gay, Olympics gay, figure skating gay, whichever it is, uh, and somebody who also likes sports anime, uh, like you know things like haiku. Uh, it's really it is really cool. So if you're even if you're not a huge figure skating fan but like sports and kind of sports related stories it is very cool kind of the really how precise a lot of the figure skating uh and kind of the athletic competition side of it is uh that it that it would probably be enjoyable just from the you know kind of the uh international sports standpoint um in addition to what's really a great story that's kind of surrounding this very technical interpretation of the figure skating season. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I had to cough. Listen, I to- I told you that you needed to do the you needed to do the actual sports history because I knew a you would enjoy it and 
B, that you you would just be better at it than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I'm do. the kind of person that like leaves a sports anime being like, I'm an expert in this very specific instance. If you put me in front of a figure skating competition, I won't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, to be perfectly honest, one, so I have a lot of Wikipedia pages open, and I usually do when I record these episodes. One of the ones I do have open is the figure skating jumps article, because I, you know, you can tell me that, you know, you move from this side of the skate to this other side of the skate, change directions, use your toe pick, whatever. I understand you can say those words to me. I know what all the words mean individually, but watching it, I'm like, that's very pretty and very cool and obviously looks hard, but I can't tell the difference between the jumps. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, right. Like I'm like, that's great that he did a quad. That's great that he did a fucking flip. But like, they all they all just look the same yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I understand. But, but anyway. if you want to watch it for yourself, Pat, where can they get it? So uh, Crunchyroll is the best answer. Uh, they have the sub and dub on Crunchyroll, um, and and both that it's fully transitioned over there since its merger with Funimation. Uh, so you can go get it in English or in Japanese on Crunchyroll. Um, they have not dubbed it to other languages yet, like they have with a number of other series. Uh, so English or Japanese are your two choices here. If you wanted to buy it digitally, Amazon Prime has the dub and sub available for purchase. Uh, and then, of course, you could always buy the DVD. Um, and as we've learned with a lot of different mergers, sometimes physical is the best way to go. Yeah. <laughs> So, sometimes I'm just like, I need to get the DVD because this might just disappear off the face of the earth. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't think Yuri and Ice is one of them. This is an incredibly well-regarded, popular show, anime, but, you know. You never know, bro. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> so, yeah. But now, it's time to take a little break. Uh, if you want to go grab some popcorn, go watch the anime, because really, it it will fly by. Uh, you can, and you could watch it in an afternoon. <laughs> you could watch it in an afternoon. You could watch it twice in an afternoon. Have fun. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll catch you after the break. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Have you watched Yuri on Ice yet? Had, did you watch it five times like Amanda did in two weeks? <laughs> It's, this is this is a true story. Okay, um, this is a true story. We really last so, year. You know, pandemics <laughs> pandemic still happening. We're not going and doing too much. Amanda decides she it's time to recapture her her weebness from uh, from her youth. Uh, and I <laughs> was getting into anime for the first time. I never really watched anime other than like Pokemon and Yu Gi Oh growing up. And so I had started to watch a lot of stuff at the beginning of the pandemic. And then we all kind of got into the weebness with a couple of our other friends, like Bernadette, my uh, fiance, Justin, a couple of us were all kind of watching stuff together. And anyway, we had watched a couple of things and, and we watched Haiku. Uh, and then Amanda was like, we should watch Yuri on Ice. It's, you know, it's gay is what we heard. It's gay. And we wait, like, did we watch Skate first? We did watch. That's right. We watched. We watched Skate, skate first. Skate the Infinity first, which is. We watched Skate the Infinity first. And then I was like, wait, we should keep because we had we had been watching Haikyuu and then we moved on to Skate the Infinity when we ran out of Haikyuu to watch. And then I was like, we should keep the sports anime train going. I have never watched Yuri on Ice and it's supposed to be really gay. And so we should watch it. <laughs> yeah and so and so i was like great we'll watch it i watched like we watched like an episode or two a little bit late <laughs> amanda started watching she's like oh it was really quick i watched it i watched like an episode or two but like she finished it and goes so when are you going to finish watching it and i was like you know we're watching a couple episodes every night and then the next day she goes have you watched your in ice yet i watched again <laughs> and i was like no i mean we watched like episode three and four it's very good we're enjoying it it's you know I'm, I'm into it and very fun and then the next day we watched like maybe episode five and six and Amanda goes well I've watched it a third time anyway two weeks later I finally finished the anime a reasonable amount of time in my opinion to watch you know a season of a tv show and she goes yeah so I've watched it five times why haven't you finished it yet <laughs> and she was getting anyway so Amanda Amanda really loves Yuri on Ice I have a season I would watch the entire all 12 episodes every single night for a week. Yeah. <laughs> I watched the entire show 
five times before my friends even finished watching it once. <laughs> there was, I think, I think the fourth and fifth time were the same day. I think. The first time I watched it, I did split it up within two days. But then I was just like, no, I have to watch it again. And yeah. it was just so fast. I could do it. Like, I would stop work at five, and then I would start the anime. And then the show would be done by the time it was time to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. it's And it is it is really a quick watch. You can, like, sit down and watch. And you're going to want to keep watching it. Uh, it that was, like, it, I mean, it, it, it leaves you wanting more. So... You know, it totally makes sense uh, that you want to, you know, to to watch it all in a day uh, and you can do it because it's yeah, again, it's 12 episodes, 25 minutes. That's like, you know, like four ish hours, four and a half hours. I can't do math. Uh, I'm just guessing. Uh, but, you know, it, it, an evening's worth of television viewing if you're, uh, you know, so there's a normal person. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't watch an entire series all at the same time, <laughs> multiple times in a row in the same week. It scratched an itch. It was just, <laughs> it was exactly what I needed. I, listen, I love this show. Um, <laughs> these characters are so much fun. This story is just so wholesome. I love it. I'm not going to talk about just yet how much I love Yuri Plisetsky. Um... Because I, I think we could talk about a lot of other things before I just rant for half an hour about how much I love this tiny little Russian skater. Yeah, surprise. Amanda is obsessed with the feral character again. God, he's so feral and I love him. <laughs> yeah. I love everything about him. Yeah. he's. I mean, he's great. He's a great character. Um, And it's really... It was like it was very obvious that they made this character so great that even the other people that are supposed to be his rivals can't even be mad at him. It's just like all. He's, oh my god, he's he's precious. He's Love fantastic. Him. But like, if we're really gonna start anywhere, we need to start with the goddamn opener. <laughs> yeah, listen. What an <laughs> incredible piece of music for absolutely no reason. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, it's great. It's great because it really, you know, as somebody who watches figure skating, it really kind of captures the mood of like a, of a, like, I could see people doing their free program to this song because it, it has I mean, people all have the right... done their free program to this yeah, song. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, it hits like the, it hits all the right highs at the right moments. And it's just, it feels the, sw the sweepingness of it. But also it's like fully a bop. Like it's an incredible oh, song. Oh yeah. The the lyrics are the original lyrics are in English. Um and it's sorry, the song is called History Maker by Dean Fujioka. Uh Dean is uh is Japanese. His parents, grandparents are Japanese, uh, which is something that he's had to come out and say because he does songs in so many different languages, because he is fluent in English, Japanese, both Mandarin and Cantonese, and Indonesian. Apparently his parents worked abroad and that's what a lot of a lot of the reason of it is. He went to college in the US. Um, but so anyway, he writes a song in in English for this, and it's so good. Like even if you haven't watched the show, just like go listen to it on Spotify. It's incredible. It's a uh one of the best openers for an anime, maybe ever. Um there, there, there's very few anime songs, openers or closers that like rank along with it, but it's like in the realm of Lost in Paradise from the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen. Like it's, Ugh. it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, and like it, like it sticks out. Like I put is it in a, a bunch xylophone? of playlists. Yeah, it does. It it's starts. With, it is a xylophone. It is, yeah, it starts okay. with xylophone. It actually is very. Funny. I thought it was going to be some fancy instrument that I don't know the name of. That just sounds like a xylophone. <laughs> no, no, there's where, where did I read it? Uh, there was something on one of the was it on Dean's Wikipedia page? No, I'm, I'm in Wikipedia. There was something about like how uh, anyway about how like it really stood out for people because it starts with xylophone and it's written in six eight, which is um and basically feels like a waltz and stuff. I mean, it's just like musically brilliant and also the lyrics are super good on top of it um 
And uh, yeah, anyway, it's just... Listen, you know, if if an anime comes out the gate with its opener originating in English, you know whoever wrote that put their entire life into oh, it. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, this is definitely not a situation where, like, four kids translated the opener of the, of the anime. Like, this is... Uh, they, yeah. It was like I'm this on purpose. Looking at you, purpose. One Piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pokemon. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, the song the song has been used a bunch. The music actually, just while we're talking about music, uh, the there's a lot of original music in this, including the music that uh, the main character Yuri uh, does his free program to. Uh, that's been used by figure skaters as well because figure skaters love the show, um, which is and for good reason. Yeah. Listen, I I had a baseline level of zero for for that's a lie. I had a baseline level of like early two thousands figure skating when like it was like really at its height. Yeah, like um, Michelle Kwan and like Michelle Kwan and like every every everybody and their mother was watching figure skating not just at the olympics like not they weren't just watching olympic figure skating like people were actually watching the grand prix <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's really having a similar it really feels like a similar moment uh recently because there's a lot of big names in figure skating now there's you know we have yuzuru hanyu from japan and nathan chen from the united states uh on the men's side on you know on the women's side we have uh, you know, we have a ton of Russian skaters who are doing insane things, uh, you know, not getting into the whole, uh, you know, cheating scandal at the last Olympics with the with uh, the Russian figure skaters. But anyway, um, there's, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of people who are really excited about figure skating again. And it's really hard to separate, in my mind, separate the um, popularity of figure skating today after a lull from Yuri on Ice. Um, because it really does feel like Yuri and I, uh, as somebody who's watched, who, I've watched every single Olympics, almost everything of every single Olympics since 2004 when I was like 11. So I, I've watched tons of figure skating. Um, it really feels like figure skating was course corrected by Yuri and I, because uh, it, all of the figure skaters love it. They, you know, a lot of the big names talk about how great the show is and figure skating was moving in a direction uh that gymnastics has moved into where it was all about technical prowess and there's a lot of crazy technical stuff going on with quad jumps and and especially on the women's side um and the uh and you know all that kind of stuff but figure skating didn't lose its artistry that a lot of gymnastics did and i think a lot of that is because of yuri on ice because you know they all watched and they all loved it and they were all inspired by it um and so so the artistry wasn't lost because the the artistry of the routines and the desire to perform from the characters is so important and central to the story that I think it kind of helped realign figure skating so they didn't end up in a situation where it was just about who can do the craziest technical thing, but also who can be the best artist, the best performer, the conveyor of the story they're trying to skate. And so we have people like Adam Rippon, who in 2018 had this absolutely gorgeous free skate that is now was part of the cutting edge of figure skating because it was so beautifully artistic and he was able to do such graceful movements with his body that a lot of figure skaters had kind of lost and it kind of helped. And so this, anyway, this anime I think has really had a big influence on the sport that we don't really see from, uh, you know, from scripted television or movies or anything like that, that often. And so it, it's really Neat. And like, yeah, figure skaters like Adam Rippon, Johnny Rear from the U.S., Japan's Miyu Suzaki, Ryuichi Kihara, Masato Kimura, Kazakhstan's Dennis Ten, and Russia's Evgenia Medvedeva and Evgeny Plushenko have all talked about, gone on record talking about how great Yuri and Ice is. And these are people with gold medals, silver medals, bronze medals at the Olympics and the World Championships and the Grand Prix and Europeans and four continent championships. I mean, these are these are the top performers in the sport for a long time that are inspired by this TV show. And it's really, as somebody who loves TV, anime, that kind of stuff, and all of these sports, it's super cool to me to like watch this marriage mesh of these things together and inspired like the next generation of, of athletes and, you know, inspired a number of 
artistic performers as well. Yeah, and something that's also like really cool and quite kind of just like compounded off of that is that um, a lot of the figure skating, well, not a lot, like all of the figure skating in the show, not only was it like kind of rotoscoped, um animated by act like actually animating figure skaters actually performing these routines but all of the routines were um choreographed by a actual figure skater um his name is kenji miyamoto and he was like yeah i thought i was totally game for like choreographing for them but i also didn't i thought it would like look i thought it would look less polished or even like not as good i guess when it was translated into an animated medium but he he was like i the way that the muscles were drawn and the the way that everything was actually put onto the page he was like really surprised by it um and he thought it was like super cool how well they translated his routines into uh, uh, an animated medium. And he also was like super surprised by how immediate the, um, how immediate the influence of the show was on kids in particular who like started skating because they had watched the show and they were like, this is so cool. Wow. Amazing. Um, and, and he apparently like he was at a competition and a foreign coach, uh, told a skater that the like that Kenji was at the rink and the skater freaked out <laughs> and was like oh my god that's amazing <laughs> yeah and, Ken, uh, and I just I'm it's sorry. super cool it, it is really cool and Kenji is a professional choreographer I mean he choreographs figure skating routines for you know Olympic caliber athletes Olympic caliber figure skaters uh and mm -hmm. and the animation is really really clean and smooth um and yeah they you know kind of animated over top of actual figure skaters to make it look as accurate as possible and as uh truthful to what figure skating is uh in in a way that uh a lot of uh a lot of anime sports anime often it fails at because like even haiku is great because because the volleyball is really accurate to what volleyball actually is except for the timing of it right because you know they'll have like full yeah. conversations and something that takes like half a second um you know very much very much not not how it works right they just they yell out words sometimes but in this mm -hmm. you know they the actual depiction of the sporting itself is is really truthful to how it works uh in you know in real life figure skating yeah because so so much of the like so you know how like in in american football for example like the actual amount of time that they spend playing football is a fraction of the amount of time that you spend watching the football game. Like, the actual time that you spend watching these 25-minute episodes, like, a lot of routines are, like, three, three and a half minutes. You watch the full routine! Yeah. <laughs> Not every single time, because, like, because, because they're in because they're in a specific program, like Yuri is going to repeat the same um, choreography over and over and over, unless there's like, unless it's part of the story where he like fucks it up or does something different or whatever. But like every single character that you meet, you see their full routine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, and then, yeah, with, with music and everything, uh, you know, the really the full, the full, experience of watching a figure skating program um and yeah even down to going and sitting in uh, where they wait for the scores called the kiss and cry you know go and sitting in the kiss and cry and waiting for the scores I love the kiss and cry doing the math <laughs> figuring out where they fall i mean going to the different competitions of the grand prix not everybody's at every single one you're trying to get qualification points to get to the finals uh you know and it's it, it's all there um it is just the grand prix season and the figure skating season is is bigger than that um but i mean it really encapsulates the whole thing um especially like in a lead up to the olympics i'll usually watch the the grand prix and it's you know they they really kind of capture what it how it's like in real life where you're like 
oh, I've been assigned to these two ones. I have to be these people to get these points. And as long as this person in these two competitions, I kind of like doing all the internal calculus to make sure, to figure out how you can qualify, especially if you would say mess up and fall on one of your jumps in the short program. It, it, it captures all of that like technical aspect and just kind of meshes it into this romantic story that's happening, uh, you know, overarching story happening over top of it. So like, now that we've regaled you with all of the 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 actual like yes this is a figure skating anime and i like there there is actual like figure skating and it does it does all of those aspects well now it's time to talk about my favorite little nuggets <laughs> yuri katsuki <laughs> little baby yes <laughs> Who are uh, what something I think they do they do really good with Yuri's story is that his anxiety and his like self-doubt is all so real. Like what so so um Yamamoto, her first instinct with Kubo was like she had Yuri and Victor planned out. Like, Yuri was always going to be this kind of, like, self-loathing, um, you know, self-conscious character who didn't really, like, believe in himself and was constantly, like, really down on himself. Um, and Victor was always going to be this really just, like, incredible skater who kind of, like, lost his love of skating somewhere along the lines and like putting these two together, like the whole point was going, was going to be like, here's somebody on the verge. Here are two people on the verge for give of giving up for like two completely different reasons. And they, they lift each other up and it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And okay. So I love Yuri and I just love how much he's just a little baby. But what I love the most <laughs> is the way when he actually gets on the ice, he turns from like this shy little baby into a fucking sex symbol. <laughs> yeah, it's I watching it today. I was like, they make they like, especially because, you know, it's it's one of those animes where they like give him kind of the you know the funny faces that like all of a sudden their nose and mouth are missing and it's just their eye in a weird shape because they're making you know leering at somebody that you know that kind of animation outside of competition and so a lot of times he kind of looks a little dweeby and he wears glasses and all that kind of stuff but they like change his hair to where it's like slicked back and all this stuff and all of a sudden he is so incredibly sexy out of like nowhere <laughs> and it doesn't and it's, help it's so okay good. it doesn't help that victor is adamant about him doing routines that push him out of his comfort zone because like the thing the thing that i wish we got was a little bit more of like what kind of skater yuri was before victor started coaching him because like the first of the first skating we ever see yuri do he fumbles like he 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 fumbles he has a terrible season he doesn't place and then oh his season's over and he has to go home um yeah well okay. and then when he gets home sorry okay what? i just have to say um <laughs> one of the things i get it you know obviously a lot of this is the the anxiety he has and you know sports psychology is like a real field because it is the pressure of being a top level athlete is can be really damaging psychologically. I get it. I totally understand. The way that everybody kind of treated him as washed up because he came in last place at the Grand Prix Finals, a competition you only qualify for if you're one of the top six figure skaters in the entire world, is insane to me. And so it's kind of, well, you know, okay, he, he messed up. But like, and think I get it. about it, he though. Yeah. Because like, because like his coach didn't think he was washed up. Yeah, like, sure, sure, sure. Coach, coach was like, yeah, I'm, I'm like a little disappointed, but like I'm mostly worried about your mental headspace. And like Yurio thinks he's washed up because Yurio is a 15 year old boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, like, but it was just his parents don't think he's washed up, or like 
it's they I think it's very deliberate where it's like a lot of the onus of like him feeling as if he does not have a career he did that to himself definitely, and like the definitely. people who the people who kind of facilitate that are people who don't understand how figure skating works yeah definitely. because everybody else who actually knew how his job worked was like bro you need to like buck up man yeah <laughs> Yeah, and it's like it's really okay. And like assuming it's like the 2015 season, right? Uh, you know, it's the season after the Olympics. It would be leading. It, oh, it's after the Olympics. Yeah, the okay. season after the Olympics, where you know he, where he maybe wasn't, he wasn't at the level yet in 2014 to have gone to the Olympics. Year after the Olympics, where people are figuring out what the next four years of their life are going to look like. And so mm-hmm. there's a, you know, it's definitely one of those like, okay, so you had a season, it wasn't great. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't, you know, there's a world championship every year, sure, but it doesn't necessarily matter matter because the goal is the Olympics, which wasn't going to be until 2018. Uh, and so he had plenty of time, even being 23 already, which is a bit old for figure skating. Be, you know, he still mm-hmm. had time to to improve himself, which is, you know, as we know, uh, those of you who have watched now, he does and is able to do in, in the course of one season. And then able to kind of like work his way up to getting into the where he'd be at Olympic caliber. And there, there's no doubt that if Yuri continues to skate, that he would end up being at the Olympics. Um, but it's just kind of the the way that it's. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the head cannon is that he does make it to the Olympics with like JJ and Victor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's um. Anyway, it's it's it was just one of those things that was like just having been like, wait, that means he's one of the top six skaters in the world, and I get it. There's a lot of things I'm good at that I personally was like, wow, I suck at this. Um, so I, I get it. But I don't think I, I can count myself as the top six of anything in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's a huge, the, making it to the finals is a huge achievement, even if you kind of, you know, broke a little bit under the pressure while you were there at the finals. But, you know, and mm-hmm. it was just kind of stuff like, well, why did you have everybody watching it to his parents on the phone? And I was like, because you were one of the best figure skaters in the world this year. Like, <laughs> because you were literally competing as one of the top six motherfuckers in the world yeah (laughs) but okay (laughs) um but yeah like something i really wish that we did get to see was like yuri who he was as a figure skater before victor but not as a washed up figure skater as like a regular one, you know, like what, 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 how did he skate before Victor decided, no, you're too safe. We need to make you sexy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But then Victor, I love, I love the juxtaposition of Yuri and Victor. I think that's one of like the best things in the show itself because like, What's what I really love about Victor's character is that he is not arrogant in the sense where he's like, like he knows he's good, but he also thinks he's like boring a little bit. Like he th- he's like he's like I think I'm like going through the motions and I'm kind of sick of that shit, and so I'm just gonna like fuck off into that good night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there like, is. There was something he says. It's so funny. Yeah. It, <laughs> how he just leaves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And there was, he said something in, I think, the one of the last episodes he talked when he was, when he's thinking about coming back, he talks about how, you know, it was like a flashback where you like, they're like, well, what are you going to do next? And he like, basically when he like decides he's retiring and he's like, why? Well, one of the things about changing it every season is that, uh, you know, and surprise, I mean, it will surprise people when I change this every season, but it means I have no solidity in my life and nothing is solid. And it's so, and I think that's like a really good way that shows that, you know, he's one of the best in the world, but he was never, he, Victor never found like what defined him as a figure skating, figure skater outside of being good at it. Yeah. Until, you know, until he meets Yuri. 
until he meets Yuri. But like, I just think it's so funny that you just have this guy who is like, yeah, I'm like one of the best figure skaters in the world, but also that doesn't really mean anything to me right now. And and to have him just like watch this viral YouTube video and be like, that, that's my new purpose. And just fucking yeah. up and leaves Russia to fly to Japan to just meet this random human being who it, it's not really that random if like when you get further into the show you realize that like Victor and Yuri have interacted before Yuri just doesn't fucking remember it because he was drunk <laughs> drunk and naked <laughs> drunk and naked um, but he just shows up and he's like hey what's up we're friends now <laughs> Hello, I am naked in your family's hot spring. Also, I'm coaching you now. <laughs> Go lose some weight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and that I will say, just because you brought it up, uh, some of the... That's why I brought yeah. it up. <laughs> the So, in it's like, it's really only the first episode, I think, maybe some of the second episode. I, I only watched a couple episodes today. It's really up until he loses weight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Figure skating is incredibly athletically demanding and they're, you know, you got to have a lot of mu muscles to be able to do some of these jumps, which are insane physical feats. But first of all, he like had put on a couple of pounds, but they draw him as like just giant, just this like, yeah. like this, he's just ballooned everywhere. And he honestly goes from being animated as a little dumpling to just being like, oh, you're perfect now. <laughs> yeah. And it was like he needed to lose like like in all reality, you probably needed to lose like five pounds, ten pounds. Like he probably wouldn't. It, it had literally been like two months, maybe. Like he probably wouldn't have gone to the point where it would have been a. And he was still he was still <laughs> training, you know, still going and skating. He just wasn't doing his like fully intense routine workout. Um, and so it, it, it's it's a bit uncomfy in the first episode or two, kind of the way they treat it. And it's definitely something, there is a huge issue in real life figure skating mm -hmm. around body image because you are performing, and especially on the women's side, because on the men's side, a lot of it is like muscle growth, which it has its own issues, mm -hmm. of course. But on the women's side in particular, there's, a you know, being small, tiny, petite, little, you know, ballerina dancer kind of, you know, same thing with uh, ballerina dancers having eating disorders. It's like a whole thing. Um, it, it's same thing in figure skating. And so it's a little bit uncomfortable just because there is the kind of the the risk of eating disorders and all that, even among men in figure skating because of the way that um, th that they're supposed to be portraying themselves. Because um, even like, even though they need a lot of muscles, very few male figure skaters are even like particularly like muscular beefy. There's like a handful yeah. of them in the pairs because they're literally lifting and throwing people that you need more you know bulkier muscles uh, it's yeah i think the beefiest figure skater in this show is Ultabek. <laughs> yes and they, they just did that because they wanted to they just wanted to make Ultabek beefy they said here is your kazakhstan <laughs> yes yes uh and and but like yuri like yuri uh Plisetsky is like so incredibly small like when they actually He's show him such a tiny baby he, like, but also that is that is part of his character arc though yeah oh yeah like the, yeah, the fact is. that he is that the fact that he is so just like teeny tiny um but yeah the, like i totally understand the idea where it's like sort of compounding on like yeah you're washed up like you you you've let yourself get out of shape blah, blah, blah. they didn't have to like make fat phobic jokes about it because like the reality of his profession is that he does have to look a certain way and he does have to be a certain physique and that's like a real thing um but they could have just like been like this is a thing that you have to do because of the nature of your profession go do it yeah. Um, but yeah, that's like one of the, I like not to minimize that it is happening, but that's like one of the few cons of the show <laughs> Yeah, and it doesn't even last very long. Yeah, like it, the, the second, the second he loses the weight, it's like, it never even happened. Yeah. And it's, 
and it's it leads into some cool, like what I think is a, a lot of really cool sequences when they're when uh so when Yurio, other Yuri, Russian Yuri comes to Russia or not to Russia, sorry, to Japan to demand Victor be his coach instead of and for context, uh, Victor was supposed to be we're gonna call him Yurio because that's what they call him in the show because they're both named Yuri. Um, Yurio, he was Victor was supposed to be his coach. And Victor just fucking forgot because that's the kind of person that Victor is. Um, and so Yurio is like, absolutely fucking not. And gets on a plane, tells nobody, tells absolutely. This 15 year old decided, no, fuck that. Got his ass on a plane all the way to Japan. Yeah, He didn't even know where Victor was. <laughs> Just, he only found Victor from an Instagram post. Yeah, which honestly impressive, but you know the use of social media in this show is really funny. It is, yeah, it's <laughs> really really good, um, especially because it, you know, it, like we've all you know those of us who watch Figures, we've we know we've been through the era of Adam Rippon, who is a huge social media presence, still is, and that was a lot of what he got his popularity uh where he was able to get endorsements and that kind of stuff was the fact that he was people liked following him on social media combined with the fact that he was um you know openly gay uh as a professional athlete which we got a lot of fan you know a lot of fans like me who really appreciate that because i would love to see more because there's tons of gay people in sports i'd love to see more of them be able to be comfortable and open and out um which you know relevant to this series as well but uh but anyway so yeah the social media stuff is really good but going back to to Yurio showing up, uh, and you know he and Yuri are kind of start training together because they're competing for Victor's coaching. You know who's he going to coach? Uh, but one of one of the cool sequences that this like you know kind of the fat phobic stuff leads into that that they had in there that was great that they could have you know left out the fat phobic jokes is this training arc where it's not just them figure skating and learning the jumps and the artistry and all that stuff, but also shows them doing workouts in the gym, running up and down mm-hmm. stairs, standing under a waterfall. You know all of the like these really intense, ath- a lot of like endurance training, yeah, athletic stuff. Because uh, figure skating is is a very athletic spirit, athletic sport. There's a lot of pure athleticism involved in addition to the artistry. And for a sport that's seen particularly among Western aud- audiences, uh, it's feminine. You know, it makes you gay, all that kind of stuff, and has notable it queer makes you athletes. Gay. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, it has notable queer athletes. I mean, as a figure skater, you usually take ballet. You know, a lot of that kind mm-hmm. of stuff that is... And they actually show that. They do, yeah. In, yeah, they show that in the show with Yurio. Yeah, but I, I really appreciate that they put it in this training art where they're doing, like, weight training and that kind of stuff because it shows that, mm-hmm. uh, first of all, if anybody knows, uh, 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 you know, gay men in particular, there there's a large portion of the gay male community that is kind of obsessed with fitness and, mus- you know, building muscle and that kind of stuff. Um, so, you know... Working out at the gym is is something that a lot of gay people do, but to show this like really feminine, soft, tender kind of experience with all of this weight training and athleticism and endurance and all that stuff behind it, it's really cool. And they could have just done that instead of you know making fun of the fact that he likes katsudon. Katsudon. <laughs> <laughs> Pork cutlet bowl. Pork cutlet bowl. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to make that once. Didn't come out very well. <laughs> It was fine. It was fine. It's the sauce. I can't get the sauce. Yeah. Sauces are my kryptonite when it comes to cooking. Can't do it. Yeah. It used to come in a bottle or not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will say, but, I will say my biggest issue with the dub, and this is a common mm-hmm. Crunchyroll Funimation dub issue, is there are some words oh <laughs> they translate to English that they don't need to translate yeah. to English. My biggest one is um uh san you know like the honorific san you know if so they would probably would have said you know um like victor san or something like that and you know but they always you know translate it to like mr victor or whatever and it always feels weird uh and especially because like most of us who are watching anime we understand honorifics you know and they they leave other ones in like senpai so anyway that's one of so things like that but also like katsudan I, anybody who goes to a Japanese restaurant, it doesn't say pork cutlet bowl on the menu. It says katsudon, uh, you know, e- even here in the U.S. So uh, there's like a lot of those things. I'm just like, you don't have to translate 100% of the words all the time. And it's because it's something yeah, there's in, a lot of in this yeah. show in particular, pork cutlet bowl is said so many times 
It's so many that times. Occasionally, I'm just like, <laughs> look, if you just said Katsudan, I wouldn't have like been thrown out of the scene here. But you said poor cutlet bowl. <laughs> and it feels weird because Katsudan, at least in English, Katsudan is a sexy word. Cutlet, not sexy. <laughs> Cutlet preceded by pork. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, anyway. So that it, and that's just a that's just a Funimation now Crunchyroll issue with their dubs that just always bothers me. It, not to get off topic. Listen, <laughs> some dubs are immaculate, and other dubs have problems. Yeah, this one is largely <laughs> immaculate. I will say, um, it just this is yeah. the main issue. But it's like it's like in Fruits Basket, one of them. You know, Toru they. Uh, they always call her Miss Toru, and I'm like, it's so strange. This girl is 14. Just call her <laughs> Toru-san. And anyway, it, that is not nearly as... If you watch Fruits Basket and it feels weird, it's not nearly as bad as that, but I- anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's the different episode. Anyway, back to my baby angel. <laughs> Yuri Plasetsky. Who I loved on site. We have a Google Doc that we're working off of. <laughs> Most of the Google Doc is in Times New Roman 12. Well, I, it, whatever. Cambria 12. Whatever it is they use. I was scrolling down like, oh, let me just see what Amanda wrote so that I know what to be ready to talk about. And all of a sudden, I just see plastered in the biggest possible le- letters just Yuri Plisetsky. That's it. That's the whole note. In size 72 font. <laughs> Anyway, continue. Please tell us about Yurio, love of your life. I love Yurio so much. This little bitch, this little (laughs) Russian asshole, the first thing this bitch does is break in the door to the stall that Yuri is hiding and crying in. In the bathroom. (laughs) And calls him a washed up asshole. <laughs> and it's immediately apparent that this is a teenager. Like, like on site, you're like, that is a 15 year old and I'm scared of him as you should be. Yeah. In context, <laughs> this scene happens hours after Yurio wins the gold medal in the Junior Grand Prix, the highest achievement in his sport that he could yet attain so far, and then immediately is like, I'm fucking coming from you. How dare you cry in my bathroom? Ugh, it's so good because even as he's calling him a washed up asshole, his Yurio's Jur- entire thought process is you are supposed to be the best and you need to get better or I'm going to beat your ass into the ground (laughs) because Yurio has no interest in competing against people who are not giving their 100%, not a single iota of interest. He's like, why aren't you better? Yeah. It's no fun beating you if you're not good. Yeah. I think the reason Yurio is so great is that he is my favorite villain type, but not a villain. Because my favorite villain is the kind of villain who goes, I'm not even going to fight you right now because I don't think you've reached your maximum potential and I don't care about fighting you. I want it to be the best fight it can be. I love that. Yuri is obviously not a villain, but I mean, I guess he's the antagonist, maybe? He he is technically the antagonist, yeah. yes. But, you um, know, he's... But, it, it's, but he's not a villain in the traditional yeah, sense. But it's the whole thing is... I'm not going to feel accomplished. If anyone is a villain in the traditional sense, it is JJ. Oh, yeah. (laughs) The only Canadian I hate. (laughs) Yeah, I was. That's a lie. (laughs) There are. I've just thought of several Canadians. I was going to say, there are other Canadians I hate. Um, Not just JJ, (laughs) but uh, that's it. JJ is another another story entirely. (laughs) But, but okay, the thing what's so cool about Yuri's storyline versus Yurio's storyline is Yuri feels that he is at the end of his career and that this is his final chance to make something of himself. 
versus Yurio, who is in his first year outside of the junior leagues. And he is coming for everybody's neck. Yeah. And uh, and he's and, and what's really cool is that his whole motivation is he's like, I need to do this right now before my body starts changing. Because if I don't do this now, I might never be able to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's really interesting because even Victor doing the math. Victor was five-time world champion uh, in a row. But that last one would have been at age 26, meaning he didn't become world champion until 21. So mm-hmm. Yurio is years ahead, timing-wise, than where than where even Victor, who was considered like the greatest, one of the greatest ever, achieved his his goals. And it it doesn't well, it doesn't matter to Yurio that, you know, he had six more years maybe. Um, but, you know, and, but it's just, it's really interesting that this idea of I have to be the best and I have to be the best immediately, or even somebody like Victor, uh, he would have been skating for years before he won world champ, oh, his first world championship. I th- I think it is canonical that he won world champion at 18. That's possible. I'm just bad at math is also part of it. No, that's fine. I just, I remember him. I vividly remember that he was a teenager, but he was not as young yeah, as still, you. He still had, you know, a couple of years <laughs> on him at least. Yeah. Um, But like, like back to when, when, when you were talking about the, the actual training involved in their figure skating, like, of course we, we've seen, we, we've already told you that you get to see entire figure skating, like programs, but because Yurio was at a point in his career where either he needed to barrel over his boundaries or remain stagnant, he chose to just keep going. Like, I love that so much of his training entering the Grand Prix was him doing ballet. <laughs> Yeah. And um and this also plays into like Otabek's storyline, which is we'll talk about in a minute, but like the fact that Yurio has been skating since he was basically an infant. <laughs> and um and you know, they also they also showcase um in Yuri's storyline that that he has a close friend who was a prima ballerina who um taught him ballet um and he incorporated he actually asked her like i need you to i need you to show me how to dance like a woman yes it's so good <laughs> which which is which is also something that was really cool um but like i just i love this feral child because also like he tr- we love a tragic backstory where like he does not have a relationship with his parents. Um, his whole impetus for like starting figure skating and being good at it is because his grandfather told him that he was the best. And his grandfather was like, I love watching you figure skate. And Yurio was like, okay, <laughs> we'll do that then. Yeah. <laughs> and he, it's just, it's so easy to forget while he's skating that he's 15 yeah and then and then he gets off the ice and you're like you're a feral little gremlin yeah <laughs> you're a little child you're a you're a fucking asshole and yeah. in the best way in in literally the best way because when when yuri beats him for victor's coach coaching skills like when when, when yuri beats him Yurio is like, this isn't good. Because in Yurio's head, he was already better. And so he's like, no, fuck this. I'm going to be better. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I do think the um, the the competition they have between, that really kind of defines the differences between Yuri and Yurio and why Victor chooses Yuri. Yurio skated the more technically proficient performance. Yuri falls uh, on one of his jumps, but Yuri is the one who was able to 
show the desire to to achieve more in that and this is the the third episode this is like really early in the season that you know yeah. yuri is able is able to prove that he had the desire and uh and the expression of what figure skating meant to him meant to him and that is what yurio finds as he's skating is what does figure skating really mean to him and why does he want to be the best and then he's able to achieve it and become the best because he finally is able to find that in himself which is, you know, kind of the same I, general idea as Yuri, but Yuri was trying to find, like, who he wants to be as a person. Where Yurio knows who he is as a person, but needs to figure out who he is as a figure skater. And something that, like, makes me really fucking emotional um, is in the, in, the fi- in the Grand Prix final, because um, both Yuri and Yurio are in the Grand Prix final, Obviously, like what kind of what kind of sports anime would this be if they weren't? Um, <laughs> and they're both skating programs that Victor choreographed for them. And so it's like it harkens back all the way to the the very first episodes, um, which like as you're watching it, even though it's really fast, it feels like such a long time ago where you're like, oh shit. I forgot that they did that, but um, something that makes me super fucking emo <laughs> yeah. is that Yurio, in his short program, he beats Victor's high score. <laughs> and I think that's really neat because um the short program is not the one that victor choreographed for him victor choreographed his free skate um but he when he skates that i cry every single time (laughs) because it's just it's so incredible to watch this tiny baby child go from just like a feral teenager to like a really incredible um very graceful and 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 so determined skater um and like yurio even himself just like literally bursts into tears on the ice it's incredible um but then you have yuri who beats Victor's free skate high score <laughs> yeah with the program that Victor choreographed for him and i just think that 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 kind of like furthers your what you were saying before about how like yuri needed to figure out who he was as a uh, as a person and yurio needed to figure out who he was as a skater and the way that Yuri figured out who he was as a person was taking that free skate that Victor choreographed for him and making it his own Mm -hmm. and performing it in such a way that it surpassed even Victor, which is something that like Yuri did not think he could ever be able to do. Cause like so much of the rhetoric in the show is like, well, if Victor was competing, if Victor was competing, if Victor was competing. And the fact of the matter is that Victor is not competing. Mm -hmm. It's just Yuri against himself and Yuri against everything he has ever wanted to be that he sees in Yurio. Yeah. And then you have Yurio, who knows exactly who he is and what he wants. It's clearly evidenced in the OVA when he performs Welcome to the Madness, <laughs> uh, an exhibition skate that he choreographed himself that is very different from what both a prima ballerina and Victor have choreographed for him because both of these people are trying to beat innocence into him. Yeah. And Yurio's like, no, fuck that. Um, but no, when when Yurio 
finishes his short program, it was something that he did himself with with no help from Victor. And I don't know. I think that's really cool. And every time I watch him do that routine, I cry. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just so proud of him. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it's it's uh, it, it, and even the he's such a baby. Yeah, it, I said this earlier, but even the characters who can't help but love him because he's just a small little feral baby, and you want him to a do small well. little feral baby that just has so much ahead of him. Yeah, he's going to do in the future of the show's world. He's just going to do so much and achieve so much, win so many things. Um, and it it really win all the awards. Yeah, it really wasn't, you know, at the end, it really, you know, Yuri meddled, and that's great for Yuri, and he was happy about it. But and he, I'm sure Yuri will keep meddling for you know going forward. But for Yuri, it wasn't about that. You know, it wasn't about achieving the pinnacles of the sport for Yuri. It was, even with everything, it still was. And you just know he's gonna go and win all these things. And it's really it just it's very exciting to kind of the way it ends that he's gonna go and do all of these great things and and achieve the pinnacle of his sport. The my biggest gripe, my biggest gripe about this show is the podium at the end of the Grand Prix final. <laughs> <laughs> because listen, there were a lot of incredible characters that made it to the Grand Prix final, including like Petit Chulonok. Who is the who in the show is the first Thai skater to make it that far in the competition ever? And his whole deal is that he like only performs to um Thai music and he he's very invested in making sure everybody knows that he is a Thai skater and he represents Thailand and he's like, I'm going to go all the way and I love him. Pichit is great. He canonically has at least three hamsters and he loves social media. <laughs> yeah. I love him so much. Um, and then you have Christoph Giacometti, who is in like the same league as Victor. Um, and he's just as old as Victor, if not, I think a year older. Um, and he's very much just like, this is my last competition. I can't believe Victor's not here. Why did you do this to me? And he's dramatic and I love him. Um, his routines are spicy. <laughs> spicy is one way to put it. Um, extra. Extra is really the best way. Inappropriate. To... Inappropriate. Yes. Incredibly inappropriate. Um. And then there's like, you know, uh, other Russian skaters. Um, there's a uh, uh, Chinese skater. There's a skater from the United States that they named him Leo. Le Della Iglesia. Yeah. <laughs> they really said we are going to make this man sound like he's from Staten Island. Um, we have some weird siblings from Italy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Um, somebody from the Czech Republic, someone from South Korea. Uh, actually, I love Song Gilly because he's so in his head about like everything being super technical and he hates Yurio immediately because he's like, Why are you like this? <laughs> and then, and then very quickly, he's like, Never mind, I see why you're like this, it's because you're good. <laughs> Yeah. Which I think it's really funny. Um, but back to the podium at the end of the Grand Prix final, I maintain that third place should have gone to Otobek and not JJ. <laughs> yeah. I don't... Uh, like, thematically, first of all, thematically it would have been better if Otobek Alton was the third place winner. Because Otobek's whole storyline is that he did not come from a traditional figure skating background. Like, that's the whole point of him. Yeah. <laughs> like, his whole, his whole deal is that, like, when he was younger, he 
he started he started ballet late but like he couldn't really like make it work for him and he apparently like he was in a ballet class with yurio like with a three-year-old yurio <laughs> Because Otobek is 18, so uh, they would have been three and six. And Otobek is like so he 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 like imprints Yurio into his brain. And he's just like, that kid is intense. Yeah. I want to be his friend. Yeah. But like, you know, he he couldn't make it work because also because he came from like a less affluent background. Um and you know, traveling from Kazakhstan to Russia to like trained and stuff like he but the point is that he doesn't have a traditional background and he's also beefy <laughs> yeah uh i do think he should have won third place i do think part of the reason is that at the 2014 olympics uh dennis 10 this isn't real life <laughs> i know but dennis 10 from kazakhstan was a like, surprise bronze medalist in the men's singles and so I think they were like, well, I, and it was, it's like a famous thing, right? It's like this, it was like, oh my God, he got bronze. It was the first ever medal for Kazakhstan in figure skating. His performance was incredible. I remember watching it. Uh, and so uh, it, it was kind of like it, among figure skating communities, it was like significant enough that if they had put Otebek on the uh, podium, I think that they would have, people would have been like, oh, okay. So it's just because he, he's Dennis 10. And I think they were trying to like make him specifically not Dennis 10. Um, it's I, that's really the only reason I can think of about why they would do it because JJ nothing about JJ's character even as with his internal monologue as he's failing nothing about JJ uh, leads to him deserving a bronze medal in the context of the story. Literally nothing. I don't even think technically <laughs> like technically it would have points wise would have made sense. Uh, you know I'm obviously not a judge figure skating and i can't do math but you know i'm pretty sure it's but like even based on their actual performances like jj bombed his short program yeah <laughs> and listen listen at the 2018 winter olympics nathan chen bombed his short program and he didn't medal despite the fact that he skated a basically perfect free program there's pre i mean granted that happened afterwards but there's precedent for it you know that mathematically it doesn't make sense i you know, it was a thing. And then Nathan Chen had to come back in 2022 in order to win gold because he didn't, didn't medal in 2018. So, you know, it's like, a, anyway. That's my <laughs> biggest gripe with this fucking show. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, but we need to talk about the elephant in the room. The gay? The gay. Yeah. The, the gay that so many people seem to insist isn't there and is only subtext my good dude these motherfuckers exchange rings as good luck charms and then wear them on national television international television international television and that they like okay Fine. Depending on which version of the show you watch, their kiss is censored. However, there is a version of the show where the kiss happens. It doesn't, it isn't just, it's not a fever dream. It's not the Mandela effect. This isn't some Berenstein Bears bullshit. It exists. They did kiss. <laughs> it's real. Yeah. And there is, even with the sh Victor's shoulder kind of going up, there is no way, no way that the way their faces are positioned, that it is anything other than a kiss. Literally impossible. The math ain't mathin'. Yeah. And I looked this up. I was like, maybe it was just that Funimation, when they did this dub, that they just made the dub gayer than the Japanese actually is. I was reading stuff today. Granted, this is all just people talking on the internet, but the, the people, you know, a, American watchers who watch the sub were saying, no, the sub is gayer than the dub was. The sub is incredibly queer. I know, because I was like, maybe it's... Like, textually. Yeah. <laughs> and also, you know, I am... 
I am a big, I, I want, you know, I want to see queer stuff on there. It doesn't have to be explicit. Like we see each other, the tongues in each other's mouth kind of thing all the time. Yeah, I think the kiss was very nice. It was very well done. I think it was very, you know, very beautifully choreographed, even if it's like, they're just, he was also hugging him. So the shoulder's going to get in the way. I mean, that's just, and then tackles him to the ground. I mean, it's very, it's very obviously what anime, those who say it's not, doesn't, doesn't feel gay. What anime are you watching? That is really what I want to know. I fully don't understand. I, cause like, fine, fine. Even if, even if you change all of the dialogue, if you change every single piece of dialogue to erase every single piece of queer subtext, the fact of the matter is that they do exchange rings in front of a church. And at least the dog. They give each other rings while standing in front of a church. I do. I did mean to watch the scene in Japanese, <gasps> see what it says, because I think they did change the lines here. But at least in the dub, at least in the dub, they go, oh, you're married. Congratulations. And they're like, well, no, actually, we're just engaged. Yes, they literally say that. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like, at the no. first ever Crunchyroll Anime Awards, Yuri and Victor won Best Couple. Most heartwarming scene is called The Kiss, Episode 7. Listen, Crunchyroll wouldn't say they're a couple if they're not a couple. They'd get in trouble. <laughs> they would. They would get in trouble. Like, I just, I don't, I cannot, for the life of me, understand how anybody gets through Yuri on Ice and isn't completely convinced that they do eventually get married. Yeah. This isn't because like this isn't Naruto. Victor literally says that we're in... yes, this isn't Naruto. This isn't Naruto and Sasuke <laughs> kissing accidentally and then people being like, oh, they're gay forever now. No, this this they're gonna be together forever because they're in a relationship. They are gay. They're in a relationship literally together. in a relationship. It's it's it, it is irrefutable. The end of the fucking show is Yuri leaving Japan to live in St. Petersburg with Victor and Yurio, their de facto child at this point. Yeah. To train and to continue to figure skate together. Their literal egg, their ex, Yuri's exhibition skate is a couple's skate with Victor. Really, the biggest issue around the queer <laughs> stuff that is not that that like is takes it out of it a little bit is the fact that Victor, a Russian citizen, does this on international television in a sport that's heavily watched in Russia. Yeah, <laughs> and he's not worried let's, about the fact that he can listen, never go back to Russia we can, again. We can we can pretend even in contemporary fiction that homophobia does not exist. Yeah. <laughs> We're allowed to pretend that there there is no reason, no reason at all for you to include homophobia in your fiction. Yeah, it doesn't need to be there. We don't need to fucking we don't need to match the world quite that much. <laughs> we can make things happy. It's fiction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and you know, I. I can get where people might be a little upset about kind of washing over the homophobia only because there is a lot of homophobia in figure skating because a lot of the people who yes. invest in figure skating are like Russian businessmen and, um, you know, conservatives, people from around the world, places where, you know, China, mm -hmm. Japan, Russia, uh, you know, e Ukraine, other places in Eastern Europe that homosexuality is not accepted. And queerness is not something that's openly yeah. accepted. And I can understand that because it's something that a lot of people like Johnny Weir and Adam Rippon and these people who are queer athletes faced in their career and gone the way. I fully stand by that Adam Rippon should have gotten the bronze and the men's singles of 2018 and he didn't because his, they didn't like his artistic stuff because it was too gay. I, I get, you know, it's a real thing. But also... Yeah. It's real nice in this. And I like yeah, that it's real like, nice. I feel like if they wanted to include that, and like, yes, it's a very it's a very real thing that happens in the sport. And like it's it's not something that like out of the context of the show that you can't you you can't just like will it away. But 
imagine them trying to fit that into the show as it is in 12 episodes. Yeah. It would have been a mess. Would People would have been like, what the fuck is that? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you would have been more mad at the fact that they botched that representation than you are at the fact that it's not there at yeah, all. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. And also, if you want other, if you want something that is more explicitly gay and is just as wholesome, that that exists too. You can go watch that. If you want something that's, they are very explicitly, they say the words that they, you know, love each other. That exists in anime. Um, You know, you can, not everything has to be this exact representation of queerness because nobody's queerness is the same. Nobody's, you know, experience with discovering their queerness, dealing with their queerness, finding somebody that they're in love with, that it makes it a queer relationship. Each person's experience of that is different. My experience with queerness is not the same as anybody else's. And so there are going to be a variety of interpretations. And, you know, I personally, the, the, the issue with the kiss, it really bothers me because why does there have to be a perfect way to kiss? I don't kiss the right way. Um, I'm according to these people, if that's the case, it's just there are th- other things to be upset about. And like, if you're going to be upset about anything about it, just be upset about the fact that it was censored. But you cannot deny that it happened because there is visual proof that there is a frame in which their lips are touching. It exists. I have seen it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. There is visual animated proof. Their kiss was animated and it was censored. Be mad at the fact that it was censored, not at the fact that it's apparently not gay enough because you didn't bother to Google. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know there's a lot of queer people who have watched the show uh, and it's been, it, it is a positive representation of queer people in sport. It's a positive representation of queer relationships uh, about discovering oneself and, and dealing with a lot of issues that aren't focused on the, you know, trauma of queerness. And as a queer person, just let me have a nice queer story, please. Sometimes you can just be happy. You can. Yeah. You can just <laughs> enjoy it. It can be fine. You can just enjoy things. You can think about things critically, but then you can also enjoy them. Yeah. The duality of man. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Mappa, where is my movie? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah, I actually don't even think we've said the word Mappa out loud. The issue with okay, so so Mappa may, makes the original. They're gonna they're supposedly making this movie, Ice Adolescence. Here's the thing: Mappa is a big studio. <laughs> they do a lot. Mappa, Mappa's working on JJK, Chainsaw Man, Attack on Titan. Yuri on Ice is the redheaded stepchild at this point. Yeah. <laughs> and and it was definitely like I'm never getting this. Movie. It was definitely a situation where it's like, oh, it's supposed to come out in 2019. Oh, sorry, we're gonna need more time. They delay it. Oh, oops, pandemic. And then COVID <laughs> happened. So, and then you know, and now Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen and all these things that make a good deal of money for Mappa. You know, it's a business decision. But also, where's our movie, Mappa? Where is my young Victor? Yeah. Yes, because this movie is. Give me, give me long haired Victor. For those who don't know. Right now, <laughs> those who don't know, it is a uh, it was supposed to be a prequel movie about Victor performing at the Winter Olympics. Um, and yeah, so anyway, we're uh, we're waiting, still waiting. They actually released the trailer worldwide in November 2020. They released a teaser. Yeah, but what it means is it wasn't like, oh, we're delaying it, and then the pandemic happened, and they just yeah, shelved it's it. It's not like nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I continue to suffer. Yeah. We'll see. I just want them. I want I want it back. It's only been six years. More. It'll it'll happen. <laughs> it's only been, I've waited longer for things, I guess. That is true. It's fine. It is true. <laughs> Whatever. But, but it's okay, because you can just watch... Yuri on Ice, all 12 episodes for the... Seven times. What is this, 11th time now? Probably. Yeah. Amazing. Listen, it's a good show. It is. It is <laughs> it's a great It's a great show. It, it, it's considered one of the best sports animes ever. 
uh, consistently. And it's only 12 episodes in a genre where Prince of Tennis exists. Yeah. And it, it, it consistently <laughs> ranks at the top of best sports anime. It also consistently ranks on the top and the top of like best anime ever. It's like Haiku. I know this is like the 18th time I've said like Haiku, but it's like Haiku where people, even people who don't watch sports anime, have sat down and been like, wow, this show is great. This is one of the best anime I've ever watched. Even if you haven't, don't watch sports anime, got to give Yuri on Ice a try. It's it's worth it. It is worth a couple of hours. You need to sit down and watch it. it you're gonna, you're just gonna enjoy it. I promise. You're gonna leave this show a figure skating stand. <laughs> Listen, you can join me in 2026 as I'm watching the Olympic figure skating in Milan and Cortina d'Ampezzo, Italy, for the next Winter Olympics. It'll be great. We'll have a great time. <laughs> We can listen to Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski and Terry Gannon commentate on figure skating. Oh, wait, wait. You wanted to mention how you're mad that there were that the commentators weren't gay <laughs> yes. enough. Listen, as somebody who... Despite the fact that the commentators were actual yes, commentators. Listen, I understand. I understand they got actual commentators. Here's the issue. This came out in 2016. I, wa- I did not watch it until 2021 or 2022. Whatever. Was that this year? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. You watched last, it last year. 2021. Year. Listen, the it's on my time, huh? <laughs> the issue is, the issue is, I have now become uh, addicted to the television watching experience of watching Olympic figure skating with Johnny Weir, former figure uh, Olympic figure skater, gold medalist Tara Lipinski, best friends, and professional sports commentator who does things like NASCAR and horse racing, Terry Gannon, come together and do figure skating. Johnny Weir is. He is like the classic, like ice queen gay. And he and Tara are incredibly critical, but they also wear the most insane outfits. And then there is actual sports person. I mean, they're all sports personalities, obviously, but actual sports commentator. His full job is like working for NBC Sports, Terry Gannon, who is this, who is very, the straight man who is, feels very out of place at first. And then you realize that they're all just great friends. Uh, and Johnny calls Terry Terrence the entire time. <laughs> they're just time. having a good time and he's just the token straight. it's straight. so good. <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's like key sports watching experience. It's incredible. It has everything that I like all wrapped up in one. And so you're watching it and they're, you know, doing their skate. They're having these inner monologues. And it's like, you know, real sports commentators, but it's like, oh, he did like a, you know, a, a quadruple toe loop. Uh, and you know, I know it was great, great of execution, but it's not like the cutting commentary that comes from Johnny Weir and Tara Lipinski. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm just like, this, this could be gayer, you know, this is, <laughs> we could make, we could gay it up. Uh, it's, it's like the, uh, the, t- the TikTok sound from, um, uh, from, uh, uh, what we do in the shadows. Uh, gay is in, gay is hot. I want gay. <laughs> Give me gay. <laughs> That's what I want every time. But that's just, that's just me. It's a peak. Speaking of queer television, peak queer television. Johnny Weir, Tara Lipinski, and Terry Gannon commentating on Olympic figure skating. Check it out. It's also, fun. Also, <laughs> like, also the outfits. A plus. Amazing. Yes. Let's go animation. Yes. They base <laughs> a lot of the outfits off of um, real figure skating costumes. Um, like, uh, one Victor's costume in the flashback in episode seven is based off of a yeah. famous costume Johnny Weir uh, actually wore. Um, uh, what Yuri wears in his uh, short program. Uh, yes. Yes. Because in the free skate, he wears the suit. Yeah. Um, no, I'm sorry. Did I say Yuri? Victor. I need to rescind. What Victor wears. I need to res- wait. I need to rescind something okay. that I said earlier. I said that Victor uh, choreographed Yuri's uh free skate. That's a lie. He choreographed both their short programs. Yes, right. Because that's what the competition was. It's all all, all yes. connecting now. Yes. Um, but yeah, <laughs> it's uh yeah, it's uh yeah, there's the costumes are really great. Um really Listen, accurate. I love I love Yurio's free skate outfit. It's insane. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's they really, they really do. This show really captures all of the different aspects of being, uh, of like what figure skating is as a sport, uh, as an art, artistic medium, um, as uh, this part of people's lives and the way it affects one another and the way that they 
uh, their relationship with coaches and with, you know, the sport itself and with their fans. We didn't even get into all the, all the stuff with, with fans and skate otakus. Oh my God. Yurio's fans. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And all this, how this all ties back to things like Yuzuru Hanyu and his fan use. Um, but anyway, it, it really, it does capture the entire sport uh, in a way that, that is, entertaining queer and educational uh and what what more could you want we love queer education (laughs) this this is this counts it's on the official curriculum yes please please like it is it is december well we're recording in november but this is going up in december it is december it is hopefully cold i don't know global warming (laughs) go watch it because winter (laughs) yeah also what else are you doing go do it (laughs) yes yeah and then uh and then december 8th through 11th i don't know if this comes out before then december 8th through 11th is the 2022 2023 grand prix of figure skating finals and then you can watch that and you'll know a little bit more about it than you did before but until then Thanks so much for joining us and uh, listening to us rant about Yuri on Ice. Um, and thanks for joining us all the time at Gate Crashers. You can catch us on all of our social media at Gate Crashers Pod. Um, and you can also check out uh, articles, reviews, other podcasts that we've done on gatecrashers.fan or wherever, pod, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. Um, and yeah, thanks for joining Patrick and I. Yeah. Hope you had fun. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm.